So there has been a new docu series being released, which unveils Football Club Barcelona's biggest secrets in the past year and a half, guys. You guys know that in the past year and a half, a lot of things have happened in Football Club Barcelona, and oh boy. This docu-series released by Amazon Prime, exclusively on Amazon Prime, is very, very hot. And I want to bring you guys some of the leaks, guys, some of the leaks from the docu-series. Of course, I'm not going to be unveiling everything for that. You guys should go watch it. But for those who don't have Amazon Prime and for those who are not going to be able to watch it, then I'm going to give you probably some of the biggest things that are being uh, released or leaked through um, this, this docu-series, which of course uh, covers a lot of private talks, a lot of private meetings, a lot of things that we knew, but we're gonna know a lot more insights about. And if, I think it was uh, very, very interesting to watch and of course, very interesting for you guys to know about. But of course, let's give a special thank you to OneFootball because OneFootball is the sponsor of this video and this channel. And if you don't have OneFootball, you can download it using the link in the description. Guys, OneFootball is simply the best football app that you're gonna be able to find covering every football league in the world guys in the world you want to follow football club barcelona you can do it through blaugrana planet and through one football and of course you can follow it anything related to football in that app moving on to moving on to dodoku series guys i want to talk about one of the big topics which is setien guys as you guys remember setien arrived in quite a difficult moment for football club barcelona messi was being uh, very irritated, the club was going downwards uh, rapidly in a downward spiral that was very, very, very negative. And Kike Setien arrived in, in, in a condition where, where the players dominated the, 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 the club, basically. The first, the, the, teams, um, the first team players dominated completely the club, Bartomeu had zero power. And Setien, of course, couldn't, uh, couldn't change this, right? I mean, he, he had literally zero power, zero backing from uh, Bartomeu, zero backing from the, the squad. And in the docu-series, there's a little interesting clip in which um, you, see, you see Jordi Alba, Gerard Piqué and Leo Messi arriving to training a little late, a little late. We don't know how many minutes late, probably it was, I, know, I think, one, two minutes uh, late but of course these people are earning tons of money you cannot be late to a training session well <clears throat> they were late and Setien literally tells them oh why are you late and Jordi Alba Jordi Alba has um, the courage to tell Setien well um, just so you know is that to me Jordi Alba Leo and Jerry referring to Gerard Piquet you're gonna have to wait for us a little bit I mean can you imagine, guys, can you imagine the, the state of the club, the state in which the players were ruling the club? Bartomeu had zero power, the coaches had zero power, Setien arrived there and, and literally the players were refusing, were refusing to, to, to follow his instructions in any way. They, they were even laughing at him by telling him, oh, you're going to have to wait for us. And... Um, well, uh, Setien said, well, this this, this uh, cannot be possible. I don't like you guys to be late. And Jordi Alba replied by saying, well, this is going to be the last time. It is going to be done now. In, in such a way that it made me think, well, I feel like now they're, they're, they have spoken between each other, the players, and, and they, they've already decided to try to fire Setien after a few weeks uh, in charge, right? So... I think there was a little bit, um, there was a little bit of the complot from the players to also pressure Setien. They didn't like um, his arrival. I, I don't know. I mean, this is all, of course, um, this is a hypothesis I'm trying to to bring on to speculate a little bit. But certainly, um, Setien, Setien in the club didn't didn't do no good, right? And we, we, we were demolished by Bayern de Munich in one of the biggest defeats in in Barca's history, and uh, the players, of course, uh, were. Uh, 
were big time responsible. They're the ones on the field, you know, they're the ones on the field. Moving on to a conversation between Kumar and Bartomeu in, in a famous restaurant here in Barcelona, actually near my house, this restaurant. Well, in, in this conversation, it was it was in the moment where where it was very heated with Leo Messi, right? You guys remember the Budo facts and, and Leo Messi wanting to depart from Football Club Barcelona. And uh, well, there, there was a big thing there. Kuman arrived also in a little bit of a difficult moment. Um, everything was very difficult back then, you know, like Kuman arrived and, and Messi was in the middle of wanting to leave, Bartomeu like in the middle of like um, a vote of no confidence, Setien like, you know, they fired him, it was insane, it, it was it was crazy, crazy times and Kuman actually told Bartomeu, look, listen, we want to count on Leo Messi, we want Leo Messi to stay, but everybody knows that he wants to leave. Everybody knows that he wants to leave. I think this was even before, even before the Budo facts of Leo Messi being released, right? So imagine, guys, imagine. Everybody knew there. Everybody knew, and, and pretty much every, everybody in Barcelona knew that uh, that Messi wanted to leave, right? Literally, Bartomeu, Bartomeu replied, "We don't know where he is. We tried talking to him. We don't know where he is." And Kuman told him, "Look, listen, look, listen. We need to speak with Messi." because we need to know if he wants to stay or not. If he doesn't want to stay, well, we're gonna be counting on the youngsters because we want players that want to stay, that want to, 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 to count in the team, that, you know, that want to play for this team. And of course, uh, Kuman was trying to uh, mediate in between, but of course had zero power and neither had uh, Bartomeu, guys. Dude, just, just for you guys to, to understand, the, the, the situation of the club back then had no rulers. There, there, there was nobody um, ruling this club. There, there, there was nobody in charge. It was the players, literally the players. These people were puppets, just puppets, waiting for everything to explode, guys. And, and just for you to understand, there was there was a little conversation between uh, between Xavi and Busquets, which the document the documentary shows, in which uh, you can you can see. And you can hear how, how Xavi asks Busquets, who's the captain at that time, he asks him, listen, is, is, is there any rules? Are there any rules in this club, like in the team? And Busquets surprised Xavi by telling him there is no rules, absolutely no rules. Xavi, of course, was, was uh, putting his heads in the putting his hands in the head, not literally, but you know, you could see his face like, what, no rules, there was, there was no, no rules in the club, there was no rules. So um, you, get, you guys can imagine the situation. Uh, Xavi, of course, changed a lot of things. You can see a little bit in the docu-series how Xavi is a more serious guy. He's more transparent with the players. And uh, I really liked the way Xavi turned this thing around. Now there's more control. Now there's somebody in charge. Of course, Xavi, Laporta, etc. But Xavi is, has done a tremendous job in the dressing room. And that is uh, important to value. Um, uh, there, there's also a little bit uh, of the episode of the Usman Dembele. You guys remember how there was a tension between the agent and uh, the board of directors and that ended up uh, with Usman Dembele sitting on the bench. Well, at this point, guys, at this point, there is, uh, there is a very, very interesting and very insightful conversation between Xavi Hernandez and the whole squad, okay? So Xavi Hernandez is there speaking and the whole squad is sitting and literally Xavi Hernandez says, I think, I think that we are, because we, because we are a family, I think that everybody should know that the club believes that Usman Dembele's representative, like manager, you know, the Musa Sissoko, is literally fooling Barcelona, is fooling the club. You know, they, so Xavi told the players that the club believes that Musa Sissoko is trying to fool Barcelona. Imagine, guys, imagine how Usman Dembélé must have felt at that moment. Just imagine how Usman Dembélé must have felt at that moment. Days later, days later, Usman Dembélé ended up renewing with the conditions, uh, accepting the conditions of Football Club Barcelona. Therefore, the agent Musa Circo probably didn't get uh, too far, and uh, Xavi certainly, certainly did uh, did uh, his part. 
looking at the situation now, we can see that uh, Xavi really believes in, in Usman Dembélé. And Dembélé has completely, completely, completely changed from the old times and from the last three, four, five years. Usman Dembélé is completely different and uh, probably um, some part from Kuman and some part from Xavi, um, they, are, they are the people to look, to look upon, right? At last, at last, um, the Messi Laporta saga once again, guys. The Messi Laporta saga once again. In the video, um, in the in the docu series, there is a little, there is a little, um, well, there is a little. Um, how can I say it? Just Laporta speaking, a little, a little speech of Laporta, in which he talks about the situation of of Messi and uh, Barca and the CVC, etc. And he basically says that La Liga was trying to make Barca sign the CVC agreement and that was the only way that uh, Messi could stay in the club, okay? Because uh, the, the situation was, was very bad economically for the club and the new rules that La Liga was applying, well, didn't let Messi stay in the club with this uh, economics. And, and the only way was to mortgage the club for 50 years. And uh, Laporta, Laporta also speaks and, and says that he tried to explain this to the family of Leo Messi and tried to give um, a concrete option to Leo Messi and, and tried to give the best, uh, the best um, salary or the best, um, the best option for Leo Messi to stay in the club. But this wasn't possible. This wasn't allowed for, uh, by La Liga. Therefore, um, what is true is that of course, um, it, it all went very quickly and Messi thought that he could renew, but finally he couldn't. And then there was all these this, uh, misunderstandings uh, and, and that's why right now there's no contacts between Laporta and Messi, right? Because of this understanding. But at the end of the day, guys, the real person, the big person to blame, it's not Laporta, it's Bartomeu, because he destroyed the club and he destroyed it. But, but inside out, man, this guy went inside and destroyed everything inside and then everything fell apart. Everything fell apart. Bartomeu destroyed it. And then Laporta, of course, um, he, he cannot make a miracle, you know, he cannot, um, he cannot recover a destroyed club with contracts that were four, five, six years with, with players earning incredible amounts out of the market. And, and of course, with the COVID crisis and, and everything falling apart, the stadium that's like literally falling apart as well, everything was, was a disaster, guys. So the situation was very, very rough, guys. The fact that we need to climb up, climb up, and we're doing it, I think it's, uh, it's an impressive job um, as well from inside out, because clearly we had to clean all the, all the bad stuff that was inside in order to keep growing and start recovering and and of course we we hit the bottom guys we we did we did hit the bottom now we're moving up and uh, certainly the economical problems are going to be with us for 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 years uh, for years of course now we are we are going to be rebuilding the stadium i give football club barcelona um possibly three three more years of of, of crisis right until we can really sign big big powerful players and in the meantime guys we need to believe we need to keep on pushing we need to keep supporting we need to give we become a member for example of, of this channel of, of the club start supporting guys start supporting economically because uh, this is what i'm doing and, and this is what is what you guys should be doing for example there is a good way when you buy a shirt guys when you buy a shirt i know they're expensive but don't buy the fake ones when you buy the fake one you don't support the club okay you don't support the club economically um, it's just little details, guys. It's little details. But anyways, if you want to support this channel, by the way, you can download one football app, or you can become a member, or just subscribe, hit the, the like button, do as you wish. But it will be a pleasure to have you. So, guys, this was my little resume about the Doku series. It's only first season. I guess they're 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 keep on they're 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 still recording, etc. And uh, we will be covering it here in this channel, um, just giving you the little insights about the most important bits. Thank you, everybody. Smash the likes, subscribe, and now. And as I always say, visca el Barça, visca Catalunya, and see you in the next video.